This is the voice of health, sharing health principles, inspiring healthful living because a healthy lifestyle is medicine. Broadcasting every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 11 a.m. Brought to you by the Lifestyle Medicine Team of Adventist Medical Center Manila, Health Ministries Department of North Philippine Union Conference, Adventist World Radio and Hope Channel Philippines. This is the Voice of Health. Para sa paglaw malas on sentak na sa aga. Welcome to the Voice of Health, trumpeting heaven's prescription that lifestyle is medicine. Happy morning mga kapaglao, may rin naman kita sa isa ka episode sa The Voice of Health. Ako yun yung makaupon subong aga ako si kapaglao, Marichelle. Sa subong aga mga kapaglao, makita kita live sa Gisa Channel 37, Digital Receiver Channel 45, Kag sa mga Facebook pages of different organizations, kaangay isang Hope Channel North Philippines, Adventist Medical Center Manila, Adventist Medical Center Bacolod, Hope Channel Bacolod, Subong man sa AWR 360 Teleradio Luzon area, Adventist Hope Channel Radio Toledo Cebu, Big Time FM 95.5, Kalbayog City Samar. Sa alas dusi tub alauna naman, makita kita live sa DWBL 1242 kilohertz teleradio. But, before kita magapadayon sa aton nga episode, subong nga aga, gina-invite ko kamutanan sa pagdoko sa inyong mga ulo para sa aton nga opening prayer. Let us pray. Our great God, Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord, for giving us this day, for an- giving us another opportunity to learn more about health, and we thank you for the presence of our speaker this morning. We pray for your guidance, for your heavenly wisdom to be upon him to, today. We pray also for our viewers, also our tech team, and we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for allowing us to share your message to our to the people who needs it. We thank you for loving us just as we are. This we pray in your name. Amen. Happy morning once more, mga kapaglaom. So, sa subong aga, ginagreet ko kamo sang happy Wednesday, especially sa aton mga Adventist health family all around the Philippines. Happy Wednesday, kag thank you sa pag-tune in sa aton subong episode. And also, ginagreet ko man ang aton mga workers, doctors, and mga department managers dira sa Adventist Medical Center. Subong man sa mga patients naton, kag mga watchers sa uh, Medical Arts Building. Happy morning, kag. Kabay kong taning nga, uh, Magpadayon ka mo sa paglantaw sa subong nga episode kay Mary kita sa very interesting nga topic subong nga aga. Ang aton nga topic subong nga aga is ini tiguluhan gastroenteritis. Ano kaya ini mga kapaglaom no ini nga topic. And ini nga, nga sakit. Actually ini siya simply as ng infection or inflammation sa aton mga digestive system. So sa, sa subong nga aga aton na mahibaloan kung ano ang mga causes, ano ang mga food nga kinanglan aton nga i-avoid no para hindi kita magkasakit um or in in a simple term nga ni this is a uh, simple as lupot daw mga paglaom. So kung kamo um interested padayon ka maglantaw sa aton nga episode subong nga aga but before that please stay tuned the bo- the voice of health will be right back Welcome to the home of eye care Adventist Medical Center Bacolod In everything that we do and in every word that we say, and in all our patient encounters, it is imperative to seek God first, recognizing God and His supremacy above the intelligence of men. We acknowledge Jesus Christ as our greatest physician, who is the source of divine healing. In Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod, We strongly believe that we are God's instruments in extending His healing ministry to everyone. From the food that we serve to our clients, to the intricate and complex procedures and services that we render to our patients, we value and emphasize the importance of extending Christ. We offer our services through eye care, a patient-centered approach 
where the word care stands for compassionate, accountable, respectful, and enthusiastic as we address the needs of our patients, as we prescribe their medications, and as we perform procedures using the state-of-the-art medical equipment to extend Christ's healing ministry to everyone. Because in Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod, we care and God heals. Are you suffering from heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, stroke, anxiety, and other lifestyle diseases? We can help you. Join our Lifestyle is Medicine Intervention Program. This is a six-week virtual health program, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 to 8 p.m. that will bring your lifestyle doctors and dietitians right where you are. There will be scientific evidence-based lectures, health screening, cooking demonstrations, workbook and recipes that will help you in your health journey. Find out what is the optimal nutrition for your health conditions and activities fit for you. This holistic lifestyle intervention program will help you and your family to experience the best life in the midst of uncertainty and stressful living. Contact us at Adventist Med Lifestyle Medicine Facebook page for details and registration. Join now! Welcome back. There is the Voice of Health still live kita. There is a Hope Channel Bacolod mga kapaglaom. Nagabot na kita sa aton nga lecture proper. Ang aton nga message subong nga aga pagadala sa aton isa ka resident there is Adventist Medical Center Bacolod. Ang aton nga guest speaker, he graduated his bachelor's degree at St. Paul University Iloilo. He is a nurse and his medicine at CPU College of Medicine Iloilo. And right now, he is one of our resident in internal medicine. He is currently in third year. He is a graduating now. And we welcome in our midst today, we have Dr. Domingo Agregado Jr. who will talk about gastroenteritis. Happy morning, Doc, and welcome to the Voice of Health. Good morning, Ma'am. Uh, good morning sa ato ng mga kapaglaom today. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me once again. No, it's a pleasure to talk to everyone and to educate everyone about gastroenteritis yes yeah, so once again thank you again doc for your availability and then if you are ready to proceed with your lecture then you may okay so once again good morning mga kapaglaom so uh, our topic that we'll be discussing today is very simple no however no uh, it can cause a lot of problems or complication if not treated adequately and uh, if uh, taken for granted. So my topic once again is all about gastroenteritis. So what is gastroenteritis? So I'll be giving you a short introduction. So gastroenteritis is an inflammation or infection of the digestive tract, mainly occurs in the stomach or the intestines. And it is probably the most commonly occurring illness with average person having about three or four bouts in a year. So uh, all of us no, for almost a year suffers from uh, gastroenteritis. So we can't do away with that. And the illness can sometimes be minor and the person may experience only nausea and it may go completely unrecognized. But on the other hand, it can also be very severe leading to death within a few days. And in terms of incident, worldwide, inadequate treatment of gastroenteritis kills 5 to 8 million people per year. Leading cause of death are among infants and children under 5 years old. So approximately, there are 5 billion episodes of diarrhea gastroenteritis occur worldwide annually. And as I've mentioned, no? It commonly affects children lesser than five years old, and there are one to five episodes per child per year. No, 
and it accounts 15 to 25 million episodes of gastroenteritis annually, resulting in 3 to 5 million doctor visits and 200,000 hospitalizations, with highest rate of infection occurs between 3 to 24 months of age. And also, in one, 1 in 50 children are hospitalized during childhood due to acute gastroenteritis, and 95% of which occurs in less than 5 years of age. 3 to 5% of all hospital days and 7 to 10% of hospitalizations annually for patients lesser than 18 are due to viral gastroenteritis, and 70 to 90% of which occurs in winter. Gastroenteritis occurs for 15 to 30% of deaths in de developing nations, so Philippines is included in that. So what are the causes? So what are the causes and causative organisms of uh, gastroenteritis? So there are three. It can be viral, and most common ones are rotavirus, calcivirus, or Norwalk virus, enteric adenovirus of serotypes 40 to 41, and astrovirus. And if it is a protozoal cause, most common causes were Gardialambia and Cryptosporidium. And if bacterial, no? Salmonella, Shigella, Escherichia coli, and Campylobacter. What is the common transmission? So usually, you know, it can be transmitted through fecal and oral route. No? Contaminated food and water. So as I've mentioned, no? since mostly uh, children are the most common culprit, so daycare or school. No? And some studies may show respiratory tract inoculations. So how does gastroenteritis occur? No? So as I mentioned a while ago, no, if uh, parasites, uh, ba bacteria, or viruses may infect the gut no, or the stomach or the intestines, there is invasion of pathogens into the intestinal mucosa, which then leads to multiplication of pathogens and secretions of enterotoxins. Then, this will lead to inflammation no, of intestinal mucosa, causing enterotoxins to have fluid and electrolyte changes, which then later on lead to electrolyte imbalances, which will lead to increased secretion of fluid into the intestines and lower absorption of nutrients, leading to massive diarrhea and vomiting. Now, what do we need to watch out for? Or what are the symptoms that we need to see or to um, uh, watch out for gastroenteritis? So most common of which are stomach infections, which are spreading through contamination of food and water, causing pain and diarrhea, as I have mentioned. So we need to look for nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, no? changes in appetite, fever, headache, no? Other causes includes abdominal pain, abdominal cramps, bloody stools, dehydration, and lethargy, for example. However, no, if symptoms does not resolve within a week, an infection or disorder more serious than gastroenteritis may be involved. So these symptoms require prompt medical treatment. And of course, no, we need to seek uh, medical help. So we need to bring the patient to uh, the emergency room for that matter. Now, I, I have here segregated uh, signs and symptoms of dehydration, commons, common which are in adults and in children under 5 years old. So, we need to look for, for adults, no, symptoms of feeling, feeling tired, no, feeling dizzy or lightheaded, uh, feeling confused and disoriented, feeling thirsty no, or dehydrated, dry mouth, lips and eyes, no, weak and rapid pulses, dark yellow and strong spelling urine, and decrease in urine volume or frequency. In children under 5 years old, no, we need to look for drowsiness. No, if children are irritable, no, if they have rapid breathing, few or no tears when crying, that's a... Uh, um, uh, signs that we need to watch out. Sun can fall to nail, soft spot on infant's head that bulges inward, dry mouth, no, dark yellow urine, no urination in the last 12 hours, cold, clammy, or mottled extremities. Here is a very important table no, uh, coming from the World Health Organization. So they categorize uh, uh, gastroenteritis, uh, dehydration for that matter, into three categories, mild, moderate, or severe. So, uh, by uh, looking at this table, no, we need to see uh, if there are patterns of weight loss, no, changes in appearance, no, uh, capillary feeling, pulse respiration, blood pressure, mucous membrane, tears, eyes, 
pinch skin, a fontanelle in infants, and urine flow. So for mild, moderate, severe, no, try to look at uh, this table, no. So if you could see if the uh, patient or the child, for example, no, has is irritable, no, or alert or thirsty or looking lethargic. So it can be a uh, uh, a sign that uh, we need to uh, bring the patient to the hospital. Or for example, if they usually breathing fast, no, or the pulses are very fast and thready, and if they usually don't have tears, no. Um, when crying, no. So th those are the hallmark signs that uh, needs intervention. Okay. So how do we diagnose gastroenteritis? So as I've mentioned here in this slide, diagnosing gastroenteritis is mainly an exclusion procedure. And in rare cases when the symptoms are not enough to diagnose gastroenteritis, several tests may be performed in order to rule out other gastrointestinal problems. So for us physicians, no, for example, if patient has having abdominal pain no, or uh, having diarrhea for that matter, we need to look uh, and we need to assess uh, patients by performing digital rectal examination to rule out if there is a presence of hemorrhoids no, or infectious causes or a malignancy if there is a mass, for example, for that matter. We need to request also complete blood count, electrolytes, and kidney function tests. And when the symptoms are conclusive, no tests apart from the, stools te the stool tests are required. So for the blood test, no, we need to look for CBC. No, an increased WBC, for example, indicates infection. No, for the hematocrit, no, we need to look for that. Uh, can be a sign of dehydration. Uh, as I mentioned, kidney function tests, no, urea and creatinine to rule out uh, causes of hyponatremia or hypokalemia or mineral imbalances for the electrolytes and uh, to evaluate uh, infection, no, uh, culture and sensitivity testing. For the stools, no, or the fecalysis, we need to look at. Uh, the ova or cis, or electron microscopy and culture sensitivity to check the frequency, characteristics, amount, consistency, color, watery, semi-solid odor, and presence of mucus or blood, and also to determine if the cause is a parasitic, no, a bacterial, or a viral for that matter. Also, no, if we are requesting urinalysis for that matter, no, elevated specific gravity on urinalysis, no, we need to also to uh, look for isotonic dehydration losses and metabolic acidosis. Now, as I've mentioned, stool gram stain, culture and electron microscopy for viruses, ova and parasites. No? Labs routinely test for Salmonella, Shigella, and Campylobacter. For fecal leukocytes, non-specific evidence of inflammation, but most commonly for bacteria and parasitic gastroenteritis, it is an indica indication of invasive diarrhea. For fecal occult blood, suggestive for uh, invasive organisms, so most commonly hemorrhagic E. coli, and specific assays which are not available here at our locality for rotavirus or Clostridium difficile. Now, how do we treat gastroenteritis? So if you have milder case, you may be able to treat your illness at home. So try this, try this, no? Uh, try the following measures. So drinking liquid regu regularly throughout the day, especially after bouts of diarrhea. So we need to rehydrate ourselves, no? So we need to drink as much as 8 to 10 glasses of water per day. Eat little and often and include some salty foods. Take foods or drinks with potassium, such as fruit juice and bananas. Don't take any medication without asking your doctor. No, so don't don't do self medication. No, consult your uh, doctor first. I would like to emphasize about rehydration for this matter because this is very important. So, what is rehydration? Rehydration is the replenishment of water and electrolyte loss through dehydration, and it can be performed by mouth or oral rehydration, or by adding fluid and electrolytes directly into the bloodstream for intravenous rehydration. So this uh, is performed in uh, emergency setting. As oral rehydration is less painful, less invasive, less expensive, and easier to provide, it is a treatment of choice for mild dehydration from infectious gastroenteritis. But for some severe cases no, or severe dehydration can rapidly cause permanent injury or even death, intravenous rehydration is the initial treatment of choice for that condition. So bring the patient immediately to the emergency room to be rehydrated. 
And oral rehydration can be accomplished, as what I mentioned, by drinking small, frequent amounts of oral rehydration salt solution. One standard remedy is the World Health Organization and UNICEF glucose-based oral rehydration salts, or as we all know as ORS solution, which contains sodium, glucose, chloride, potassium, and citrate. They said sugar improves absorption of electrolytes and water, but if too much is present in ORS solutions, diarrhea can, can be worsened. So uh, uh, ev everything uh, uh, in excess is not good. So uh, we, ne we need to take a sugar ORS solution in moderation. ORS does not stop diarrhea, but keeps the body hydrated and healthy until the diarrhea passes. So when vomiting occurs, rest the stomach for 10 minutes, then offer small amounts of ORS solution. Start with a teaspoonful every 5 minutes in children, and a teaspoonful every 5 minutes in older children and adults. There are studies involving pro probiotics that, that are helpful in uh, managing gastroenteritis. So what are probiotics? They are microbial cell preparations or components of microbial cells that have beneficial effects on human health. So they are mostly composed of lactobacillus or no, good bacteria of the gut. No. They compete for available nutrients and binding sites, thus acting against enteric pathogens. So there are Cochrane review of 23 studies about probiotics, and they have noted that probiotics reduce the risk of diarrhea and duration of illness. And it has maybe some benefits in acute infectious gastroenteritis in addition to rehydration therapy. So how do we prevent gastroenteritis? Of course, no proper hand washing is a must. No, so we need to wash our hands no, uh, before and after eating or before and after handling food products no, or food uh, or in cooking, for example. No? As I mentioned, proper food handling and complete cooking pasteurization of milk and juices, clean the toilet and bathroom regularly, especially the toilet seat, doors, door handles, and taps. And don't forget, you know, we need to brush our teeth regularly twice a day or even thrice a day. You know? And avoid food buffets, uncooked foods or peeled fruits and vegetables, and ice drinks. You know? So you need to prepare your own food if you are uh, having diarrhea or you need to uh, bring your own uh, water you know, when going in a restaurant or uh, uh, going uh, anywhere or in traveling. So for children, you know, hand washing is again also important. Excretion can begin before symptoms and continue after symptoms is solved. And asymptomatic infection, common route of spread. No? For uh, children, again, no, rotavirus vaccine is very important. So what is rotavirus vaccine? They are pentavalent vaccine administered orally at 2, 4, and 6 months of age. And first dose between 6 to 12 weeks, not later than 12 weeks, and all doses administered before 32 weeks. And it study shows it will prevent 75% of rotavirus cases and 98% of severe cases and 96% of his hospitalizations due to rotavirus. And they also emphasize among children diaper changing. So changing areas should be separated from food preparation areas. You know, so proper waste segregation is important since diapers should be placed in occlusive bags you know, so that there is uh, no cross-contamination among food, you know, among milks of the children for that matter. And proper cleaning solution is a must. So for waters you know, or milk, you know, water purification, more of an issue in developing countries, including the Philippines. So we need to boil for uh, 10 minutes or using chloride-containing tablets no, in uh, um, developed countries. No, But for us, no, uh, usually recommend a boiling of water for 10 to 30 minutes. Okay, and that ends my presentation. Hope you learned something today. So thank you very much. And yes, thank you so much, Dr. Agrigado, for that very informative uh, lecture today, no, nang very happy kami and blessed sa mga presence of today, Doc. Kambaga ni Dari mga kapaglaom, no, health, health communication can also promote behaviors and choices that can possibly impact people's general well-being and everyday lives. So, um, initia isagid ka 
privilege man sa ato, no? Especially na we have doctor here nga makahatag sa atin because ining ining gastroenteritis though common ni siya, no? Kung makita nyo sa lecture ni Doc Agina ng kadamo sang cases na na kung hindi matreat, so mapatay gid ang patient, no? And we thank you once again, Dr. Agrigado, for your time and for giving us that um, very informative na lecture. So, we will proceed to our question and answer. Mga paglaom kung may ara ka mo mga pamangkot, kag kung may ara ka mo comments, then you may leave a comment sa atin yung Facebook page. And we will have our short break. And after that, mag-proceed kita sa atin nga question and answer. So, um, stay tuned mga kapaglaom. The Voice of Health will be right back. For your healthy meal options, visit us at Nutribites Cafeteria, located at the West Wing ground floor of Adventist Medical Center Bacolod. Available for delivery via Food Panda. You may also visit us at Fruits and Bites, located at the ground floor of the new Simplicio Palanca Medical Arts Building of Adventist Medical Center Bacolod. For healthcare needs such as executive checkup and annual physical exam, Visit us at Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod, C.B. Ramos Avenue, Takoling, Bacolod City. Call us at telephone number 488-7777 or email us at info at adventisthealth-bcd.com or DM us at our official Facebook page at Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod. We are happy to bring you our Bansi Happy Card, Hospital Affiliation Privilege Incentive Program for our loyal patients, discounted hospital services for our card holders, plus the additional perks of discount privileges up to 30% with our partnered companies. For more information, please contact us at 034 488 7777, local 335, cell phone number 0921 299 2122. You may email us at marketing at adventisthealth-bcd.com Welcome back to the Voice of Health, mga kapaglaom. Yung nakita sa atin nga question and answer. So, sa akin nga first nga question, Doc, ready ka naman, no? <laughs> yes, of course. For our first question, atin nga first question, Doc, is drinking Yakult can help gastroenteritis? Uh, thank you for that question, no? Uh, Yakult has is a good also probiotic no but um no in moderation only uh, but we usually give no um uh, mga uh, uh, those medications that are uh, uh, has uh, um, mga my probiotics bala like for example bacillus clausi no uh, example mga basiflora ursiflora no or uh, uh, mga um uh, vitamin C plus zinc, no, because there are studies that, that have shown no, that they uh, help prevent uh, diarrhea. Okay, thank you so much, Doc. So, mga kapaglaom, ano no, nang hindi lang pagpatamaan pa si Yakult yes. na naman tanan ninyo yung no, no, kay may probiotics ang Yakult. Pakad to gapon, visit gapon sa doctor to have it check kag madiagnose, gid kita properly, kag matagaan sang bulong. Mm -hmm. So, correct, correct. sa atin nga next nga question, Doc. If ORS a she is not available at health center or nearby pharmacies, how do you prepare ORS, ORS solution at home? So, ano ga yung ORS? Ah, oral... yes. Uh, ORS is an oral rehydration solution. No, So, if uh, Yakult no, is not available because Yakult is very much costly, so medyo mahal siya. So, we can prepare ORS solution at home. No, so if uh, or SSA is not available, so or as a uh, solution is composed of half teaspoon of salt and uh, six teaspoon of sugar in uh, one liter of water. So that's uh, then you need to drink it, no, imno naton siya, no, to prevent a uh, diarrhea and to re rehydrate ourselves, no. So going back to the previous question, no, if uh, as I said, no, if your cold is uh, too much for you, uh, we could offer no a uh, ORS solution prepared at home or or SSA which are available in uh, local health centers. Okay, so kinanglan man siya doc nga may like resita ang ORS. Uh, no, uh, we you can have it uh, over the counter, okay. no, or uh, there are 
ORS sachet solution available sa aton mga barangay health centers no or uh, local health community. Okay, so mm. they can they can have it or they can avail it for free kung sa yes, mga yes, yes. sa mga health centers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a very good nga nga idea mga kapaglaom mm -hmm. no. So para naman sa next nga question, thank you doc. What symptoms one needs to watch out and to look ahead prior entailing hospitalizations? Okay, so again, no, if the symptoms is very much severe, such as a persistent diarrhea, no, persistent nausea and vomiting, no, among adults, no, then uh, symptoms of dehydration, just like what I've mentioned, no, for children and for adults, no, usually for children, no, if they are breathing too fastly or fast ready pulse, or as if you could notice, no, they are very much pale, no, or they have a uh, low BP or hypotensive, na and um uh too much vomiting lightheadedness or symptoms of acidosis no so you need to bring the patient to the emergency room for further intervention so most likely no uh since patient no is uh vomiting no so oral rehydration solution or oral solution is uh not applicable for this matter so uh we need to bring the patient to the emergency room to be rehydrated no so iswero gitsha so so that intravenous iv you know will be uh, um, given to the patient for rehydration. Okay, another question, Doc Darino. Um, is it, Doc, nga kung na-diagnose ka with gastroenteritis before, mabalik-balik na niya, especially kung may mga food nga makatrigger sa iyang atyan? Okay, that's a good question. Now, again, it all boils down to the uh, mode of transmission. As what I have mentioned, no, most commonly, a uh, fecal-oral route, no? And also, um, uh, proper food handling is very much important. No, so of course, no, uh, it, it, it is possible, no, but uh, we need to prevent it by um, uh, washing hands, hand washing before and after eating, no, or before and after cooking for that matter, no, or and also, no, if you want to go to the toilet, no, or uh, comfort room, for example, uh, wash hands after and before. And also, um, in terms of food, no, uh, sa mga pagkaon, no, uh, we need to cook our food properly, no, avoid uh, overripe uh, food or mga um, panis nga pagkain, no, uh, because it could lead to gastroenteritis, no. So uh, only those foods nga um, properly cook, fresh, no, fresh foods that are washed thoroughly, yes. Okay, so agad yapon siya mabalik sa handling ng food and hygiene, mga kapaglao. Yes, correct. Okay, so um, I think this is the second to the last question. What food to avoid if you have gastroenteritis, Doc? Ah, I have answered it a while ago, no? Uh, it all boils down to food handling, no? So again, avoid uh, eating, no? Uh, over, over, na ripe. Uh, fruits, no, or we need to, um, you know, cook our food properly. There is no such thing as we need to avoid, but um, uh, most likely, you now if we are eat a uh, drinking milk, no, we need to pasteurize the milk adequately, or the milk for that matter is new, no, or mga bago siya, hindi siya panis, no, so that to avoid gastroenteritis. Those were among common, no, among uh, children, no, uh, because they usually, uh, breastfeeding or bottle feeding for that matter no so make sure lang that uh, the milk that they are giving no is uh, bago or new no okay so thank you doc i hope nga na clear ka mo na mga paglaom about it another question another question naman doc does antibiotic has a role for gastroenteritis mm -hmm. that that's a good question no again no uh, do not take antibiotics unless you consult your doctor no because that is the most common notion that usually uh many people is having no again it all boils down to the cause so there are three causes no if it is bacterial viral or protozoal then if the cause for example after lab test no is bacterial then i antibiotic has a role no otherwise if there is protozoal or viral no so antibiotics has no role no for uh, gastroenteritis 
Alright. So, um, hindi kita mag-self-medicate mga kapag laom. No? Kaya usually, amo na ma-headlock kita or hulaton pagid nga maglala before kita mag-visit sa doctor sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. gin- may mga nakilala ko, Dok, nga ang antibiotics ang isa ipa, ah, mo naging ko before. Yes, no, no. no. So, Always remember, no, mm-hmm. what is uh, effective to one, no, may not be effective to you. No, so every person no, is very much different, man. But uh, you need to consult your doctor for expert opinion, Gidea, so that you'll be requested with uh, adequate laboratories no, and diagnostics so that uh, one should be treated properly. Uh, so, mm. so kung amo na dok may raha gastroenteritis, um, what are the laboratory tests nga first mga i i avail? No, uh, uh, example no as what I have mentioned no uh, fecalysis no stool no uh, you need to see if there are ova or cysts no or parasite no sa stool mo no urinalysis you need to look for the specific gravity urine specific gravity. Uh, CBC complete blood count no for uh need to see the degree of uh, dehydration for the hematocrit or the elevation of WBC if there are cyst- infection for that matter electrolytes na to, no so jum potassium calcium no if there are electrolyte imbalances no and uh, kidney function tests no uh crea bun no uh needs to be requested at the same time and other other factors no depending on the degree of severity of gastroenteritis and dehydration all right so very mm-hmm. well said thank you so much once again dr agregado for that um beautiful and a clear nga pag-answer sa aton nga mga questions no no matter how important the message about health no kung in, kung wala siya na properly um hatag sa aton sa mga aton mga doctors and public mm-hmm. health uh communicators so hindi gid siya ma-reach sa aton nga mga individuals and communities nga nagakinanglan so but once again we thank you Dr. Gigado for your time and for giving us a very good lecture and um wonderful na episode naton subong nga aga so before kita mag-close basi mga ra kang uh, i-greet pa doc or last words sa aton mga viewers sub- subong aga okay thank you so always remember no that uh, don't take a gastroenteritis um uh and uh take it uh seriously because if um uh if not uh, treated properly if taken for granted it will lead to further complications and uh it may lead to death no for that matter and also i would like to greet my co-residents who are watching at the same time at adventist medical center bakal um department of internal medicine no, they are watching and also to my uh, consultants and also to the nurses and staff of uh, adventist medical center and also to my family in iloilo who is watching today so thank you so much no for inviting me once again it is a pleasure to talk to voice of health no yes. uh, salamat salamat did thank you thank you once again dr agregado and Congratulations in advance, no? Manog graduate na si Doc. Yes, no? sa iyang, fingers uh, crossed. Residency. <laughs> so, um, we, we will pray for you, Doc. Sa mga, thank you, ma'am. Uh, continued nga, nga journey, no? Oh. And we thank you once again for your availability today. So, mga kapaglaom, um, I hope nga may natunan kita, no? Kag may na-learn kita subong aga. So, once again, before kita mag-close, mga kapaglaom, I want to share to you a, a passage from... From Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30 verse 17, it says, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast Zion for whom no one cares. So, and, and kung kita may mga masakit mga kapaglaom, no, God promises us a health, basta kita lang mag take care or sang, uh, sang tim- temple ng ginging ging hatag niya sa aton kagin paalagaan. So I hope nga hindi ta ni pag itake nga do ka light lang siya no nga issues sa aton nga body. Let's always take care of our body by um sa mga reminders ni do kagina no nang prepare prepare the food nga dapat fresh and also makakapaglaom na fresh and clean. Yes, yeah. fresh and clean <laughs> and dapat proper hygiene gid no. Yes. Wash your hands all the time. So once again, before ki- before kita mag uh, continue, gina invite kanta nang sa pagdoko sa inyong mga allo para sa atin ng closing closing prayer. Okay, let us pray. 
Our great God, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for giving us another blessing about health. And we thank you for the presence of Dr. Agregado for her time and for um, blessing him with your heavenly wisdom and for allowing each one of us to learn and to appreciate your blessing about health and your message about health. We thank you as well for all of our viewers who are still with us until right now. And we also thank you for um, blessing our tech team and our episode today. We thank you for the success of our program today, Father. May you guide us and continue to be with us as we continue our duties and responsibilities that you've entrusted unto us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us just as we are and for accepting us and for forgiving our, all of our sins. This we pray in your name. Amen. Madam, mga salamat. Kag-updan nyo kami sa daso naman nga episode next Wednesday, no? Diri lang sa Hope Channel Bacolod. Makita kita kag Continue nyo kami nga pag pag sa M uh, MWF, sa GSA Channel 37 at Digital Receiver Channel 45. MWF sa Facebook pages ng Adventist Medical Center Manila, Hope Channel North Philippines, Adventist Medical Center Bacolod, Hope Channel Bacolod, kag subong man sa AWR 360 Luzon area at DWBL 1242, kilohertz Teleradio, Alas do si Tobtob alauna sang hapon. Kag mga kapaglaom sa liwat ako inyo kaupod subong aga ko si kapaglaom Rachel nagapabilin sa inyo to please take good care of your body and minds because a healthy body and a healthy mind is a sign of a healthy lifestyle. Magkilit anay kita liwat sa dason nga Wednesday diri lamang sa Hope Channel Bacolod ini ang the voice of health nag remind sa aton that lifestyle is medicine. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. L. Laughter is medicine. The stress reliever. Is laughter really the best medicine? Laughter is an emotional and physiological response to humor with psychological benefits and healing effect to the body. Genuine or spontaneous laughter are associated with positive emotions or feelings and produce better mood. Laughter decreases blood pressure, reduces anxiety and negative emotions, boosts immune system, promotes healing process and recovery time among patients. He will yet fill your mouth with laughing and your lips with rejoicing. Job chapter 8 verse 21. Laugh more, frown less. I. Interaction is medicine. The friendly immune booster. What is life without interacting? No man is an island. Each individual is interconnected with one another. Interaction improves mental health, boosts the immune system, promotes physical health, strengthens family ties and social relationships reduces mortality risk. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 to 10 Understand more, argue less. Food and fluid is medicine, the taste of health and the thirst quencher. How long can you live with nothing to eat or drink? Several studies provide sufficient evidence. Plant-based nutrition involves eating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and legumes. These kinds of food lowers your risk of heart disease 
reduces risk of hypertension, helps in prevention or management of diabetes, prevents obesity and other chronic diseases. Water is among the basic needs for survival of humans, animals, and plants. About two-thirds, or 60 to 70 percent of human weight, accounts to water. Every cell, tissue, and organ of the body depends on water to work properly. Flushes out the toxins and waste. Regulates normal body temperature supports skin health, facilitates good digestion, provides protection for brain and spinal cord from shocks. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 Nourish more, abuse less. Exercise is medicine, the preserving power of motion. How are you keeping yourself active and fit? Sitting is the new smoking. Inactivity is a silent killer. We can overcome this sedentary behavior through exercise. Reduces risk of developing chronic diseases such as diabetes heart disease, colon and breast cancer, boosts energy, self-confidence and mood, improves mental health, lowers risk of depression and anxiety, lowers risk of falls for adults. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. Proverbs 24 verse 5 Move more, sit less. S. Sleep is medicine, the body restorer. Are you getting enough rest? Sleep is important to achieve overall well-being. It enables the body to repair itself from damages, restore health, and regain energy for tomorrow's activities. Sleep improves immune function, enhances emotions and social interactions, restores energy, repairs and regenerates cells. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Rest more, worry less. T. Temperance is medicine. The key to balanced life. Do you practice moderation and self-control? Everything in life requires balance. Moderation is key even in good things. Temperance improves immune system, prevents obesity or weight gain, prevents lifestyle diseases such as heart disease, stroke, and cancers. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 Balance more, indulge less.
why. Your faith is medicine, the divine healer. How is your spiritual health? Spiritual health is tied to wellness. People who are facing serious health issues tend to do better if they have a strong spiritual connection. Your faith gives peace of mind, brings happiness, reduces risk of depression, provides moral support, improves life satisfaction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 Trust more, fear less. Light is medicine, the energy giver. Are you getting enough sunlight? Moderate amounts of sunlight offer great benefits, from providing warmth, lifting people's spirits, to giving one a feeling of well-being. Light lowers cholesterol regulates calcium levels and to prevent rickets and osteoporosis, regulates body clock and sleep cycles, prevents seasonal depression or seasonal affective disorder, stimulates appetite, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 Expose more, hide less. E. Environment is medicine, the lifesaver. Does your surroundings make you stressed or relaxed? We save the earth when we live a healthy lifestyle. Pure air, clean water, plant-based diet, and greener community build and support the life of everyone. Nurtures an environment that preserves resources for the next generation, reduces stress level, enhances brain function, promotes healthier lifestyle, improves work productivity, Then God saw everything that He had made, and indeed, it was very good. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and chapter 2 verse 15 Preserve more, pollute less.